Hey everyone, Nick here. You're listening to an early podcast. This was recorded before, sadly, my Instagram got hacked and deleted. So, in the end, when I say follow me at all started with a mouse 71, that is gone. Now, you can follow me at Disney Detailer on Instagram. Thanks and enjoy the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode two of All Starter with Mouse podcast. I am Nick Labazetta. And I am Tony. And today we are talking about the best additions or changes to Walt Disney World in the past five years. So Disney World does a lot right. And the next five years are going to have a ridiculous amount of changes. So we want to document some of the things that have already happened so they don't get left by the wayside when things like Star Wars land and the new hotel become uh, something that's a reality. Yes, and I think we should uh, start things off with um, Disney Springs. I, for one, Anthony as well, when we went to Disney, we would really never go to downtown Disney, and we only went to Disney Springs once since it's opened up. But when I was a cast member down there in the college program, I went there all the time just to hang out, uh, grab a drink, grab some food, and it just was like a very relaxing place to be after work or before work even. Yeah, we went once together. Um, It was our last day. It was the middle of the afternoon. And we kind of just walked around. We checked it out. We got a uh, a couple things for lunch. And I'm still bitter about the Adventurers Club closing. Now, if you don't know what the Adventurers Club is, first of all, I pity you. And we'll explain what that is in uh, further episodes. But it was this great thing in downtown Disney that they got rid of when they started planning for the new Disney Springs. So I was still bitter about that, and I thought all this stuff could just go away, and I wouldn't care as long as I have the Adventures Club back. But then second time I went, I was alone. Um, I was coming to visit Nick at the Disney uh, when he was doing the Disney program, and I had lunch or dinner at uh, Boathouse, the Boathouse. And I was really impressed. Great food. And then I went to Sprinkles Cupcakes for a uh, dessert. Very good. And I enjoyed walking around. You know, I was just by myself. I wasn't with any friends or anything. And it was still relaxing. It was nice. There was a good vibe in the air. People seemed to be enjoying it. People having a good time. There was music. So I I guess, you know, my hatred of the fact that that my favorite place on the planet isn't there anymore it's okay um, besides that. Um, Nick seems to like it more. He's been there more. But I'll, I'll give him, I'll give Disney credit. They, they did a decent job with it. If they brought back Pleasure Island and Adventures Club, then Disney Springs would be perfect. And I think that would be like a regular place we go to on our trips. Oh, yeah. Now, you don't even need the full Pleasure Island. I don't even really remember a lot of it except for the Adventures Club and Comedy uh, the Warehouse. Comedy Warehouse. Yeah. Um, but, and and we'll talk about this later with a couple other things on this list, but Disney seems to keep um, bringing the Adventures Club feel into new things they make. Um, Jack Lindsay's Hangout has always been said to have a slight Adventures Club feel. There's the uh, new one, um, the Speakeasy, I don't remember the name. Enzo's of it. Hideaway? Yes, that's supposed to have an Adventures Club feel. So it's like Disney knows that... Um, People still want that. People still have a uh, hankering for that, and they keep trying to add it to stuff. But you could just bring the club back. That would be if only it was that simple. I know. Do you want to go to the next one? Yeah, so number six is a uh, combo. It is the addition of Tiffin's and the Nomad Lounge in Disney's Animal Kingdom. Uh, Tiffin's is the new newer signature restaurant in Animal Kingdom. It's the first signature restaurant there. Um... And it's connecting lounge is Nomad Lounge. Now, uh, we went to Nomad Lounge twice. We've been to Tiffin's once. Have you been more? No. Just once with me, all right. Um, Food was excellent. Theming was fantastic. Nomad's Lounge was incredibly incredibly relaxing, great drinks. Basically, it's all you can wish for with a restaurant and a bar in Disney World. It's a great place to spend a few hours just hanging out. Uh, We were there when it was raining, and there's a really nice relaxing um which awning i guess yeah awning and and uh, relaxing chairs nice comfortable chairs we just sat there while it rained one afternoon we, when we were doing it all day at animal kingdom we just killed a couple hours there and it wasn't like we were just wasting time or just trying to get the day through it was just nice there was yes there's this all this other great things to do 
but you just want to just sit here. They just have a great vibe to it. There's some music piped in. Um, and Tiffin's is, is delicious. Tiffin's is signature meal, of course, which means it's going to be the best of the best of Disney World. But the prices were pretty reasonable. Now, we were eating, and we had a 40% discount, so it was basically a steal. But uh, even without the discount, I said it, I think it would have been worth it. Um, there's a lot of great detail in Tiffin's. Uh, we can get into that in future episodes when we talk about the details in the parks. Um, it was designed by an Imagineer named Joe Rohde, who, if you listen to this podcast, you will continue to hear our love about him. Um, all in all, Nick, I think Tiffin's just a fantastic addition to an already great park. Yes, and another thing about Tiffin's is inside um, of the restaurant, they have beautiful, like, the walls have, like, paintings yep. on it, very pretty. Go ahead. And then um, after, when we got our check, we got a um, little picture of Joe that Joe Rody drew. I think I got one of uh, an elephant and her daughter, and you got... Like Pride Rock. Yeah, something like Pride Rock. It wasn't Pride Rock, but it was something it was very similar. Something that Joe saw in his travels to Africa, and he um, he sketched it. Joe Rody, he uh, he goes there like all the time to to eat and go to the Nomad Lounge. And actually, I was at Animal Kingdom for the twentieth anniversary, and I was walking to Pandora, and I look over, and he is sitting there giving a little conference, talking to people. Uh, it was very cool. I tried to scream his name, but he didn't see me. And we actually sat in the. Um, at the table that he likes yes. to sit at. Our, our um, server told us that he likes it because he can see all the people coming in. He can see the people having a good time checking out the paintings on the wall. Um, it's three different rooms, and again, we can get into more detail in a later episode, but each one is designed differently, and the details of each room coordinate with a certain aspect of the park. Um, this is The level of detail put into it is not a surprise based on Joe Rohde's other work. The man is a genius. That's right. And moving on, I would say probably my favorite new restaurant in Disney World, Skipper Canteen. Now, being uh, in Disney for four months and going to Magic Kingdom a lot on your off days or before work, you have to eat. And um, you get a little sick of the quick service, the chicken nuggets, the hot dogs, the cheeseburgers so you looking for something else there were times where i just randomly walk into skipper canteen get an appetizer which is cheaper than the meals at quick service and i would just um i would enjoy something beautiful i had something called like the chapapas i think it was called it was braised pork on corn patties oh it was just delicious i would go there again just to get that skipper's canteen is one of the things that i've been really impressed with Disney over these past five years. I mean, a lot of the stuff we're talking about, we're going to talk about further on this list are new rides, new lands. So, of course, they're going to be like the granddaddy of the additions. But Skipper's Canteen, it's just, it's quiet. It doesn't try to be anything that it's not. But it's got so many great parts to it. First of all, uh, Adventure Adventureland has some of the best theming in Disney World. It's just fun. It's exciting. Um you know, there's just a hodgepodge of things. And and the Jungle Cruise is maybe the best thing there. Um, everyone loves the skippers. Everyone loves the, the wacky activity, activities they do, the little uh, antics that you can find, the trinkets in the, uh, in the queue. And Skipper's Canteen brings all of that over. And again, we'll get into more detail of that on a later episode. But if you love Jungle Cruise, if you love Adventureland, if you love... Um, that entire area, Skipper's Canteen, is something not to miss. If you get a good skipper, it's going to be among the best uh, experiences you'll have at a Disney restaurant. It's like your own private jungle cruise, basically. Details abound in that place as well. If you love the Adventures Club, like we were just talking about, there's a lot of tributes to it too, um, which makes that, you know, right there worth the price of admission, even if the food was terrible, which it's not. The food is fantastic, like Nick said. Um, I got the a uh, whole fried fish. If you've seen any pictures of Skipper's Canteen, that will be something you've seen advertised. It's the scary-looking fish that you know makes children cry. Um, it was delicious, fantastic. I have nothing bad to say about it at all. Skipper's Canteen, A plus. As in as far Nick's right, as far as restaurants go, I would rank it probably. A, and we'll do a episode about this probably. But I would say of one credit restaurants, probably among the top three or four in Disney. I would agree. So number four, 
we've got Frozen Ever After, the new ride in Norway. Um, now, I liked Maelstrom. Nick, you like you like Maelstrom too? Yeah. But we weren't crazy about Maelstrom. Um, P- I, th- I think there's there's this sense that um, now that it's gone, people seem to like it a little more than it, than they actually did because there was never a wait. No one ever talked about it before. But it's more popular, maybe, to say how great Maelstrom was. Um, but I'll be honest, I, I loved the Frozen movie. But when I heard they were going to take over Maelstrom and do it in Frozen, I was not expecting anything really good. I was expecting a rush job. Um, I was expecting they're just going to destroy Norway. It's just going to become Frozen. Uh, it's going to make people like the movie less. It's going to make people not want to go to that uh, country. And I love that whole area. So I went in cautiously optimistic. I was thinking, you know, if it's as good as Maelstrom, that's that's all I'm asking for. And after the first ride, I was like, wow, they killed it because it was it was honestly better than Maelstrom ever was. Um, the audio animatronics were great. There's a lot of little things that um, have to do with timing and smoke and, and snow. That's fantastic. Um, it's a little longer, which is cool. Uh, it does a good job of keeping the same feel you don't feel like you're not in Norway anymore it's just a, a like a folklore of Norway of Norwegian history um, and the queue is really well done the queue is very nice it's you know always nighttime in there uh, I think they just they just did a perfect job with it and maybe it's um, it's a testament to that they can add uh, movies into world showcase and not lose the feel of the country people you know there's always worry that they're just going to turn world showcase into another magic kingdom or something you know morocco will have aladdin england will have mary poppins and people don't like that but you can do it right and they've shown that that you can still have the feel and the uh, the vibe of norway while having some of these intellectual properties yes and i wasn't even a big frozen fan when the uh movie came out i thought it was overrated people were like going crazy about it and then when frozen was announced to be the new ride in norway i was like give me a break this is not going to work out and so being in norway with the ride with frozen implemented into norway it makes me appreciate both norway and the movie a lot more like i am now like a frozen fan i enjoy i enjoy it a lot more and i've still only seen it once so like i don't like it's not the movie that changed me it's it's norway and how like the ambiance of it in World Showcase has um, is just amazing. Um, and for the next one, since it's probably Anthony's Tony's favorite thing in all of Disney World, I will let him talk about it first. Nick is right, um, but he's also wrong a little bit because it's not just my favorite thing in Disney World. It's probably my favorite thing on the planet Earth. Um, Trader Sam's Grog Grotto. This is a new addition. Now, um, the Poly had a major renovation in the past five years, and we don't have much experience of the Poly before that. The first time we actually ever stepped foot in it was during construction. Um, and after we went back the next year, it was all done. It was beautiful. But we can't say, like, oh, you know, the lobby is so much better or worse because we never saw it before. But one thing we can say is that Trader Sam's was added. Now, Trader Sam's is a bar in the Disneyland Hotel. Very famous. People love it. And when it was being uh, announced that it was coming over to the east uh, coast, people flipped out. So, you know, we thought we'd go in. We'd try it out. We knew there was supposed to be some cool things that happen when you order certain drinks. And when we walked in, I think five minutes into it, I fell in love. Not only is the food good, the drinks are fantastic on their own. But the place is just loaded with fun. Um, you know, we won't spoil it in case you end up going. But certain drinks trigger other things to happen in the uh, bar. Um, they might have your server do something crazy. It might have uh, something on the wall start doing something. It might have something in the window start doing something. Um, it's always fun. And the best part about it is people get into it. Like something I don't love about the jungle cruise is even if you have the best skipper sometimes the group you're with is just like i'm not gonna laugh at anything you know this is dumb which which kind of takes away some of the fun of it but trader sam's everyone is engaged everyone's loving it. it's probably you know probably helps 
they're, you know, most people are drunk in there. <laughs> That's why they like it so much. Um, and again, Trader Sam's has that connection to the Jungle Cruise, to Skipper Canteen. It's, again, that same uh, folklore that is so good from Disney. Trader Sam's, if you don't know, is based on the character Trader Sam, the headhunter from Jungle Cruise. Um, the place is also loaded with great memorabilia. There's a picture of Walt holding a giant uh, snake. There's a little uh, orange bird in the corner. There's a poster of the Nautilus, uh, the boat from the classic uh, Fantasyland attraction, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. And there's also great souvenirs. You know, the best thing about a good restaurant, a good attraction, is you can take a little piece of it home. And there's great souvenir cups that you can buy uh, and take home. I've got three, I think, on my desk right now. And... Trader Sam's is something. When I stayed at the, when we stayed at the Poly, it was one of my favorite things to do. Every single night, I was down there, uh, ending the night off. It's, there's no better way to end your night. And like we said, the Adventures Club is no longer there, of course. But and this is a very good substitute. Yeah, the, like you can get your Adventures Club feel with Skipper's Canteen and Trader Sam's. And you know, you can't end a night at Skipper's Canteen, but you can end end your night at Trader Sam's. And when I walk out of there, I do feel like it's that that sense of of Disney magic with an adult twist that made the Adventures Club so unique, and it's again it's it shows that they know people still love this thing because they're keeping it they're keeping that vibe alive. So Trader Sam's best place on the planet. I don't you know I, even if you don't drink, go and get water and just sit and watch. Get wa- food. Get the um, <clears throat> what did we get? The pork tacos. Yeah, pork tacos and um, dumplings. dumplings. Yeah. And, and there are a couple non-alcoholic drinks. They're not that good, honestly. Um, if you're going to go and, and drink, you know, either stick with like a Coke or water or get something alcoholic. Um, but w- worth one visit. And then when you go once, you'll be going back all the time. Um, and also, I'm pretty sure the rule is if you have children under the age of 21 or people under the age of 21, you can't go in after 8 p.m. Is that sound right? So for 4 to 8 Children are allowed in, kids un- underage. So, like, if families are planning yeah, and checking think, it out. I think it opens at 5, but I'm not sure. Okay, it might be 5. But, yeah, 8 o'clock, um, kids aren't allowed in. And, again, I do love that because I, I think there was no age limit to the Adventures Club because we would go in all the time. Yeah. But you can, you know, it does get a little a little more raunch, as raunchy as Disney World can get um, without the kids. And you don't have to worry about, you know, and is in ears picking up whatever you're saying. Uh, so number two, now now for the longest time, number two was number one um, because it. And number two was my favorite place on Disney property, not counting Trader Sam's. Um, now let Nick talk about this one. So number two started when we, I think they were starting building it when we like in, for the past four or five years. Um, I don't remember the exact dates, but it's New Fantasyland in Magic Kingdom. 2013, the first part opened. In 2014, the second and final part opened. Thank you. And I absolutely love New Fantasyland. There's, every time I'm in Magic Kingdom, I would just literally just walk there, look at a Beast Castle, which every time I walk by, it looks like someone painted it onto the sky. It is so beautiful, so perfect. That waterfall coming down. Then you go to Gaston's Tavern, which is probably the most the most calming uh, ambiance of Magic Kingdom. If you just need to get away from it all for one second, just take a rest. Gaston's Tavern is amazing, and Anthony Tony, I don't think he enjoys this as much as me, but I've come to appreciate Storybook Circus. This is actually news to me. I have to hear this. I um, went there, and Dumbo is it's a very cute ride. Uh, they have a new fast pass system. When you go in there, you can they give you a number or like a color, and you go play with the kids. Go play like in a jungle gym, playpen type thing, and um, it's very nice to see what they do. But I like Big Top Souvenirs so much. Their merchandise store. It's a big version of. Uh, it's just a really big tent that has uh, merchandise, and then they also have a bakery in the middle of it. And one thing I did one of my last days in Disney was I got a apple pie apple, which I highly recommend getting. It's one of the best tasting snacks I've had there. Now, what is it? It is a green apple. Um, 
with like white chocolate around it, cinnamon, brown sugar, and then two marshmallows for the Mickey ears. Well, that sounds delicious. Yes. Um, someone told me to get it my first day on the program, and it took me like four months, but I finally got it. What I did is I got that. I walked to Gaston's Tavern, sat down in the room uh, with which is mural of himself, his giant chair, and it was just the best. Like I didn't care that I could get on to mine train in 20 minutes because it was early in the morning. I was just like, I'm here to just relax. Um, I know also Tony doesn't like Voyage of the Little Mermaid, but that ride is a great ride, just another one to just relax. I see New Fantasyland as just a place to relax. Even though it has the biggest ride in Magic Kingdom, Mine Train, I still think of it as like if you need to just get away from it all, go on Little Mermaid Ride, go sit in Gaston's Tavern. It is definitely a place where like you don't feel rushed where you might in other lands or places in Disney. And, you know, it's funny because this kind of shows how, how me and Nick do Disney a little differently, not separate from ourselves but separate from from most other people because nick just spent five minutes talking about new fantasy land and i agree with most of everything he said but aside from like a three second throwaway he didn't even mention the biggest part of it seven doors mine train and that's what makes this place so good because yeah seven doors is we both love seven doors it's one of the best people I understand how people complain about it. I don't know if why they were expecting, you know, an Expedition Everest type ride in Fantasyland where kids come with their parents to go on rides. But it's perfect. It's it's a perfect coaster. Um, great mix of adventure and uh, dark ride with the seven doors in the in the middle. Um, but what Nick is saying is absolutely right. Aside from the, you know, rush of new of um, seven doors getting there, you know, that look always crazy lines. New Fantasyland is so relaxing. You can sit in Gaston's Tavern forever. And when we do, it's always like our go-to break. You know, we, we sat there thinking about how we were going to get out of Disney World during Hurricane Irma. We sat there when it was pouring a few months ago, waiting for, you know, the, the, the rain to stop. It's just a great place to go. And again, there's so many little details in New Fantasyland. There's tributes to old rides. There's uh, little things in, in in the walls that are funny. Um, there's tributes to people. There's so much good stuff. I, I personally, you'll you'll learn this the more we go on. I'm crazy for waterfalls. Like any waterfall, any fountain that Disney has, I'm gonna be like that's gonna be my number one thing. Like I, you know, I don't care about Star Wars. There's a new fountain. You know, I gotta go see the fountain. Um, and New Fantasyland has like five, I think, waterfalls. And like Nick said, the one right near uh beast's castle is beautiful big powerful looming um just a fantastic uh job there's one near um uh tangled's bathroom which yeah it's a bathroom but it's the best themed bathroom on the planet um that's another place you can kind of just sit and you know you're yeah you're sitting around a bathroom i don't know how disney does this but it may, you make you you want to go to a bathroom and just hang out it's the only place in magic kingdom where i go to the bathroom I, that might be right, actually, for me too. Um, so there's the, and while I'm not a big fan of the Little Mermaid ride, I think it's it's fine. Um, I I usually skip it. The queue is fantastic. It's great details. Again, there's there's a nice waterfall. Um, it's there's a nice transition from above ground to below ground under the sea. Um, the whole place really is just fantastic um the only complaint i would have about new fantasy land is that uh, i love be our guest um when we've gone for lunch but they've made it like impossible to get in for dinner and i would like to go and just explore it on some off hours you know there's a lot of really cool things in it but you can, you know you can't do it if you don't have a reservation of course because you gotta cross the bridge it's not like you can just sneak in and take a picture like any other restaurant um, but aside from that you know I really have no faults with New Fantasyland there's a couple of great hidden Mickeys um, there's a lot of great you know like we said uh, detail there's some great backstory and it, it fits in really well with Fantasyland with you know the quote unquote old Fantasyland um, there's a great transition of theme to it. Um, you know, fantastic. It's so much better than Storybook Circus, which is why it took over. Toontown. Toontown, I'm sorry, Toontown. Yeah, where the Toons used to live. 
Um, and one thing about be our guest is if you're in there at all, ask a cast member to show you the hidden Mickey's because there are some amazing ones. And then go into the Rose Room, look at the painting of um, the Prince, and wait for the lightning to strike. Something interesting will happen. All right, our final best addition to. Now, can, can I say something about this one? Yes, go ahead. Before we say what it was, because now everyone can probably figure this out. It's not like we're holding some crazy secret in. Um, but people crapped, and we'll say crapped to keep it PG, on this idea for years. They said it was going to be terrible. I was one of those people. Nick was one of those people. They said it was going to be terrible. They said it was going to be awful. It didn't fit. Um, and this is why you have to have faith in Disney. Because number one, our number one, and what should be your number one as well, Pandora, the world of Avatar. Now, I hated the movie. I think the movie was terrible. No one remembers anything about that movie. But it made $2.7 billion. So everyone saw it. And while I don't remember a single character... And I don't remember a single thing that happened. I do remember Pandora itself. And I had no emotional connection to Pandora. I had no reason to care about it. And when they announced it, I, I, I remember thinking, that's strange. But after, like, wh while they were in the process of creating it is when I became, and Nick as well, more um, diehard with our Disney love. And... Um, started to appreciate the details and, and the backstories of this place. And that's when I learned the name Joe Rody. So as I fell in love with Animal Kingdom, um, the park that Joe Rody was the chief Imagineer of, and I learned that he was the head, the, the creative director of Pandora, I thought, okay, we might have something here. So for years, I watched like little pieces of it get built. I would see, you know, pictures of it online. I'd see um, you know, sketches of it, and I was just beyond excited. And when we first went there last year, and I, like I turned my head and I saw the place, it was just like just audifying. Um, it was it was something that like it was it was nature more beautiful than nature. Like every frame was a picture, but the irony is, and Nick pointed this out. We, we were taking pictures of it and you said um, no picture will do this justice and he's right because I look at the pictures now and it's just like this you know this isn't a fraction of what it is I look at pictures of New Fancyland and I, I love it and oh beautiful that's great it doesn't work for, for Pandora and that's because there's so much depth literal depth in it because it's not just one dimension it's not just you know a rock or a mountain there's a mountain and then there's a waterfall and then there's mountains behind that and then there's leaves and trees and then a little waterfall above that it looks like it goes on for miles because it's not supposed to be a park it's supposed to be a real place and they did an incredible job it's there's no signage there's no mickeys um everything is themed perfectly down to the last detail Everything there is supposed to be there. Nothing looks like it's supposed to be a, a, a theme park. You truly do feel like you're not in Disney World. It's like, go ahead. It feels like you are literally transported to the world of Avatar. You go and you walk into, you walk in and you have to rub that giant plant to detoxify, to purify the air. And we will talk more about that when we do the details of Animal Kingdom and Avatar. And so when you walk in there, then you are seeing what you were seeing the giant floating mountains. And um, as a Disney photographer, it it's probably the best place in Disney to take pictures. I went there for 20 minutes just to walk around Pandora and take pictures and left Animal Kingdom just because I was like, I got to get pictures of Avatar or Pandora. Um, their, their food is delicious. Their, their drinks are delicious. The night blossom with the little bursting bubbles on top is so good um even like the the merchandise store wind traders doesn't have a sign that says wind traders so you just after right no it does, does. It, it does but it doesn't say anything about it being like merchandise for a park but there would be signs on pandora for the pen for the people we'll get into the backstory of it later but 
there are people who live on Pandora and who explore Pandora. Yes, so they would, yes, um, Ace. Yes, and then um, you have the two big rides, obviously, Flight of Passage and yeah. Navi River Journey. We, we, you know, again, we've talked about this thing for like five minutes and hasn't, haven't mentioned the rides. But, as and Navi River is good, and we'll talk about Navi River, but the other one is the best thing you'll ever do. Flight of Passage is, without a doubt, my favorite ride in all of Disney. I would put it top three for me. But that's not to take away anything from it. Um, yeah, I just, like, I went there at night to take pictures. I was just walking around and just hearing the the banshees in the background, the animals, just hearing it all, seeing um, the floor light up, the plants bloom. Uh, it was just uh, a breathtaking experience. And I wish I went there more times at night than I, I did while I was down in Disney for four months. It's the only land in Walt Disney World where there is no music because it's not a land in a theme park. It's a it's a place. So the only background noise are the are the animals that live in Pandora. Um, but that is almost music in itself. Um, and I I do think we should mention the rides. Um, Navi River Journey, beautiful boat ride. Um, you know, I, again, like I said, I love water, so I really like the Navi River Journey. Fantastic song. I have nothing but good things to say about it. But Flight of Passage is really like a life-changing thing. Like you come off of that and you just feel better about life. You just feel happier. It's the and it's it's so not impressive when you think about it because it's basically you're sitting down in a wheelchair in a uh, uh, motorcycle that is bolted to the floor and you're watching a movie. And that's it, really. But what they've done with that is beyond incredible. And you know, we we won't give anything away because I didn't know anything going in and I liked it like that because it just it just blew me away I the only thing I will guarantee you is you will sit there and because this is like everyone's reaction and you will just have a big goofy smile on, and like halfway through you'll just start laughing you don't even know why you're just gonna start laughing because there's just so much joy in you right there and it's again like when Disney does it right and they do it right 90% of the time but when they do it right, they do it perfect. And it's another example of Imagineering at its best, of Joe Rohde being a master at his craft, and of Disney constantly topping themselves. And, you know, I, I personally like Splash Mountain better because, um, for like sentimental reasons, I love the rush of Everest a little better. But anyone who says um, Flight of Passage is their best ride, um, it, you know, is not wrong. Of course, it it's it might be objectively the single greatest ride in a theme park on the planet. Um, and again, it's this is something that you know people went in not expecting anything. You know, they were like, this whole place is going to be just for a ride. And I have two minds of this: if Avatar, if Pandora was just created for this ride, it would be worth it. But if they took out the ride, I would still go to Pandora just as much. And a couple of things about Flight of Passage. Uh, if you like to see how rides work and like the mechanics of that, when you're on Flight of Passage, turn around. You'll be very, uh, you'll be, you'll enjoy to see what happens, like how the ride works. And then as you're leaving, look and you walk, you start to walk down that hallway. Look to your right. You'll see three handprints of Joe Rohde, James Cameron, and John Landau. And they were the people to help create Avatar, the Pandora, <clears throat> and all this. Um, just little stuff like that. Just like they didn't need to put the hands up there, but it's very cool to see it because as you walk around Pandora, you'll see hands of the Navi and hands of the Alpha Centauri people, and that's their like that's their imprint. But then this is also the Imagineers imprint on Pandora. Uh, yeah, I got nothing to add to it. Um, again, there's a lot details overflow in Pandora. And when we do, you know, episodes dedicated to details in Animal Kingdom and Pandora specifically, we'll get into all that. Um, but yeah, Pandora, perfect. Disney proved everyone wrong. Um, anyone who said it was going to be good, you know, doesn't matter anymore. They, they're going. They're standing in line for five hours to do this thing. And because of Pandora, and well, Pandora uh, is fantastic. Animal Kingdom on the whole is basically perfect. But because of Pandora... Animal Kingdom is now the second most visited theme park in Orlando, just behind the Magic Kingdom. So people years ago used to say, 
Animal Kingdom is like a half day park. You don't even have to go to it. You can skip it if you want. Now, it's got more people coming to see it than any other park in in um, Orlando, including Universal and including Epcot, which was always number two. Um, and a lot of that is because, most of that basically is because of Pandora being a huge success. People didn't think it could compete with Harry Potter uh, that Universal created. It competes with Harry Potter. It's taking people away from Harry Potter. It's better better details than Harry Potter, better attraction than Harry Potter. So that is our top seven, our best of the best when it comes to the newer things in the last five years in Disney. Um, the next five years are going to be incredible, like we said in the beginning. 50th anniversary coming up, Star Wars Land, uh, Future World is going to be getting a facelift and adding new things, possibly a new land, a uh, new country in World Showcase. There's going to be a new attraction in World Showcase. Toy Story Land opening up in two months. Um, you know, we can keep going, and I'm sure there's things that haven't even been announced yet. But just because the next five years are going to be great, I hope people remember that these last five years, Disney also killed it and did a great job with it. And that does it for this episode of All Starter with a Mouse podcast. Let us know what you think of it. What's your favorite change in addition uh, in the past five years? You can contact me on Instagram, All Starter with a Mouse 71. Anthony, where can they reach you? Uh, nowhere. No, no Twitter, nothing like that? We'll have to get him on there soon. All right, well, we want to thank you for listening, and Kungaloosh. Kungaloosh. <laughs>